history. There's an overhanging sense of mystery and there's distinctly an aura that hits you about this place. A visit to Orford Ness should be a safe one, but not necessarily an easy or comfortable one. And that's really been our philosophy. For nearly a century, this vast wilderness of shingle and salt marsh off the Suffolk coast was a prohibited place. I first came here 10 years ago when the National Trust bought Orford Ness from the Ministry of Defence. I was immediately captivated by it and set out to search for living witnesses who could help me piece together the hidden history of this forbidden corner of England. first time you come to Orford Ness, you're likely to be pretty astonished by it. It's so wild, it's so unforgiving, it's so sinister in some respects. And it is completely untended in the sense that it looks exactly as it did when the Ministry of Defence pulled out. But this is not a policy of carelessness on behalf of the National Trust, it's a deliberate policy. It's a policy born out of ignorance too, because nobody understands fully what happened here. We do know it was the place where radar was pioneered and hugely important work was done on Blue Danube, Britain's first atomic weapon. But unlike an 18th century house, here there are few historical references to start with. Also, the National Trust has had no experience in preserving this sort of property. It's the only former military establishment in the country now open to the public. And if that wasn't enough, the landscape features the Trust is familiar with, mud flats, lagoons, reed beds, are a rare variety here. So, a combination of unique ecology and military secrets has meant Orford Ness is completely different from any other place in its care. It was a very controversial purchase. The, the MOD left the site as a present in the mid-80s, and between then and 1993, there was a huge amount of illegal access onto the property, causing a, a lot of damage to the site, both to the natural history as, uh, and geomorphology, as well as just pure vandalism to buildings. And uh, it's taken us a long time to, to try and bring that round and uh, try and get across to people the, the fragility of particularly the shingle parts of the site. Orford Ness is the largest vegetated shingle spit in Britain and one of the most important areas of shingle anywhere in the world. It's had this secret history that we are now able to understand and also a secret nature which until recent time has been out of bounds for scientists to study. This is not the sort of coastline that um, our members necessarily would have associated with us because it was in a terrible mess. It was quite a dangerous place to visit because of the nature of the Ministry of Defence occupation. But there wasn't any doubt about its importance for nature conservation. I mean, it's got just about every designation you can think of uh, for, for the protection of species and its actual structure is very interesting. The shingle ridges create their own sort of vegetation. So you could make a case for saying this was just a very important piece of landscape. But then you come up against the, the history, and the history is uncomfortable. Did some of your members feel that this aspect of the nest was something that they shouldn't get involved with? I think they were, well, certainly our committee members who had to approve it weren't in any doubt of the interest of some of that history, the invention of radar here, uh, the testing of parts of atomic weapons. Um, but they probably would have thought that the actual physical evidence of that presented terrible conservation problems, and it certainly wasn't beautiful. So nobody could deny historical significance. The, the issue was really, well, why ever the National Trust to protect that significance? <laughs> 